I think I messaged you, Danae, about flesh curtains. In the context of the Did scene, you? not Did in general. You now? It wasn't just... Tell me more. I seem to have forgotten. <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Sins, presented by Cinema Sins. Welcome to Behind the Sins, a weekly look at everything going on inside the world of Cinema Sins. I'm Aaron Dicer, and I'm joined by Danae Hughes. Not Jonathan. We write for Cinema Sins and TV Sins and do various other things inside the Cinema Sins universe as well. And also not Jonathan, but joining us on the show today, please welcome back another Cinema Sins writer. It's Ian. Hello. Hello, Americans. Hello. 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 We don't. Are you talking about Aaron and I? Or are you talking about the audience at large? Because you've just no, no, insulted no. almost uh, so many people. How does oh. that feel to insult so many of the people who listen to the show? <laughs> Point one, being an American doesn't have to be an insult. <laughs> Ding. And point two, I was specifically talking to you guys, so oh, shut okay. up. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah. So we're hanging out with Ian today, which um, I guess I'll just say may become a more common occurrence. Just want to kind of, you know, put put in your Perhaps. brain uh, that we are looking to shift some things, freshen up the show, so give you a heads up on that. But uh, if nothing else, I uh, want you to know Behind the Sins continues to be a look. Behind the Sins. Behind the Sins. And it will <laughs> yeah. always a podcast. be yeah. that. A podcast about what happens Behind. when three friends get real. And No, wait. Sorry. That's <laughs> that's that's the real world. I, <laughs> this listen, summer listen, coming we're... to... Yeah. If there's a show I will ever not be on, it is one of those. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah. You, would you... Is, would you Aaron, because you love them. Yeah, would you 100%. Actually, yeah. Oh, no. my goodness. Yeah. If they called tomorrow and were like, come on, big brother, I would be like, yes, tell me where to show up. Um, mm-hmm. I would I would love that. Well, I, I think there's a difference between big brother and, you know, what the was real the world? show? The, the real, real world. world. Mm-hmm. I almost mm-hmm. went road rules. Well, that was a thing, too. Yes. Yeah, there's a difference between those two. Yeah. One is more of a, well, I don't know. You know more than I do. I just feel like real world was like, how can we put the horniest people who like to drink alcohol <laughs> together in this space? And yet they still haven't called. I, like it's just it's it's a weird thing. It's a weird. But that thing. is also a really good description for Big Brother. It is exactly the same. Well, no, that's a good description for UK Big Brother. Uh, oh, US, is it different? Oh, it's it's very different. US Big Brother is very oh, interesting. Different. There's yeah, very little. just like a uni house. Correct. So U- UK Big Brother. Oh, we've gotten into it. Here we go. Uh, UK <laughs> Big Brother is much more like real world. It is just put these people in a house, see what happens, see what conversations they have. Yeah, we'll throw a few games in there to make them play, but that's really kind of only to inspire conflict and different things amongst yeah. the people that are there. And then the audience is the one that like votes them out or whatever, votes them to be yeah. have power or that kind of stuff. US, very quickly, the first season was like that, but then the second season was all internal. So every vote that happens, who go, who leaves, all that stuff happens inside the house. So it very quickly oh. became a an actual game like Survivor where it's about alliances, who's talking to who, and, ve- and much less about hooking up with somebody or, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah. there's, there's relationship very, drama. Yeah. Yeah. So real world, big brother UK are the kind that you're, you're talking about today where it's like, just go in a house. Are people going to hook up? Are they going to mm-hmm. say controversial things? Whereas mm-hmm. us big brother and like survivor and some of those are more about strategy game. Um, you know, that I, kind of stuff. I think I was interested in those shows at the beginning because of the human nature element of it. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, you put different personalities in a space together and then you observe them. That's interesting to me. But then when I realized how much of it is just fabricated by producers, sure. you know, it changes, it changes it for me entirely. Yeah. Where it lost me in England was you used to have a really good balance of extreme personalities and regular people in quotation marks but then the later seasons it was let's get the most hideous mix of people we can find put them in the same place and that's not fun because every single episode is conflict and i want to win the money yeah yeah yep it is uh the production part of it is just something you kind of learn to know um i believe the separation i try to make is the gameplay is is not rigged uh even though a lot of the conversations are prompted uh, the actual like who wins, who gets voted for, those kind of things um, are legislated to be real. In fact, they have to they have to map their game plan before the season starts legally here 
Uh, I'm not sure about in the UK um, oh, I've be- never because into they're it. not That's allowed. To, they're not allowed to change up like what challenges happen, anything like that, because then they could interfere in like wanting somebody to go further because they like the character, uh, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Because since the quiz show scandals, which by the way, great one of the greatest movies of all time, quiz show. If you want more on the quiz show uh, scandals, uh, it has definitely been legislated that game shows have to have authentic winners. Um, you know, because their argument back during then was. We want to put on an entertaining show, so we're going to give the answers to the person we want to win. What's wrong with that? Yeah, you know, um, you know, it's just like any other show. Um, so uh, that's actually uh, illegal now. So they have to be very careful about that stuff. So yeah, because yeah. if there's prize money involved, you can't rig it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's the thing. Well, there you go. A little reality TV talk right off the bat, just like that. we all wanted. Uh, all right, let's move into this inside scoop. What's he building in there? Uh, We're going to take a look at the videos from the week, the process of sending them, how we felt about the stuff we are sending, kicking it off on commercial sins with the direct TV commercial, Don't Wake Up in a Roadside Ditch. Uh, I wrote on this one. Um, is this is this a commercial? Ian, I'm, I'm curious about you in the UK. Like, are these commercials that find their way across the pond or is this all new stuff to you? Yeah, 75% of them don't make it over. I may have heard of the product, but... The vast majority, I still don't know what I'm being advertised at um, by the end of it, including <laughs> this one. I still don't know. And that is the sign of like a really good advert. If it can tell you what the product is with zero context, this, I feel like, requires me to have context that I'm missing. But yeah, I, there are some English adverts I would love to sin. We, we, especially back in like the 90s, we had some bonkers adverts. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be great. I think you su- should suggest some of like the... UK adverts and get those on the writing list. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, Cause it mm-hmm. would be kind of that same feel for us. It's like, you know, what is this? <laughs> what is this product? And why is it a crumpet? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> why, why do they keep calling cookies biscuits? Uh, you know, the important thing <laughs> because they're biscuits. That's why. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, I, uh, I remember this commercial <laughs> and it's, it's actually one of my favorites. I like the idea that there's this weird domino effect in life that if you don't buy our service, uh, you're going to be an outcast. And it's so over the top and so ridiculous and therefore very easy to sin. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, like if you give a mouse a cookie, but the horror version. If you give a mouse a biscuit, as it's called there in the so UK. Much, so, yeah. Wait, you just, did you give, did you give a prostitute mouse a biscuit? <laughs> a prostitute? Mouse? Yeah. What? How did you we said, get to prostitution? Because you said whore. What? Who said? Did. Who did? You did. You said whore. Horror. Horror. Hor- hor- horror. Horror. <laughs> no, you- <laughs> who, who said horror? I totally oh. missed it. D- D- Danae said horror, which sounds like horror, which sounds like horror. Just missed it. Just missed it. Wow. <laughs> so wait till we talk about mirrors. <laughs> mirrors. <laughs> mirrors. <laughs> but yeah, D- Danae, you're right. Yeah. It's like if you if you give a mouse a biscuit, that that is basically what the 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 ad is and then just kind of all the ramifications and stuff that happens um i had a really fun time writing on it because of that ridiculousness and i'm not gonna you know uh go into it too much but i did have to say in this uh this may have my single favorite pun i've ever written in the history of writing for sins currently could change who knows and here's the thing when i love a pun i've done i can almost guarantee it's terrible uh because (laughs) it's because it's too perfect and maybe a little abstract, maybe requires some research, who knows? Uh, but the toxic masculinity pun in this one is just the combination of the pun gods and angels descending and singing a song in my brain and just going, there it is. You literally can change toxic masculinity to toxic masculinity with the removal of one letter and mm-hmm. it's exactly what this commercial is talking about the fact that somebody will beat you up because you have one eye and it's just like it's just <laughs> for me when you can do something like that here's the beauty and the pain the beauty is look at this incredible thing that just happened i can't even claim it as my own because it was presented no. by the pun gods like it's just right there right. you were just a vessel i was a vessel of this thing and then the pain is but is it funny <laughs> do, no, do and people it, and it is. get it 
so I, I don't know if you've named them, but I, in my head, I've named them universe sins because I can't take the credit for writing them. They were there in the universe. I just put mm-hmm. it on paper. So the, right. um, the, in the crudes too, um, the anti-profanitaries. Yes. Yes. The, just, I didn't write that. That's just what they are. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. So that was the one I did want to uh, bring out. And there were some people in the comments, uh, that were like, um, I don't get it. What does that mean? I'm not quite following. Uh, anyhow, uh, the eyes are often refer- referred to as macular. macular. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's it's just Very right good. There. there. Yes. Uh, yeah. Danae, why don't you go next? Oh, okay. I know how to do that too. Talking <laughs> stuff. Um, I really like the when you get angry, you blow off steam. And then the you just mispronounce masturbate. I really thought that was funny. <laughs> um, but my favorite one was the end upgrade to direct TV. You know, the commercials prompting you to just take the bite and go with their company. And the sin is not a fucking chance, which I actually felt like Aaron wrote that from his soul. <laughs> <laughs> knowing Aaron, you know, knowing the like y- you are very passionate about the services that you uh, subscribe to mm-hmm. and you have your preferences and you do your research and so i i felt like that was just one of those sins where maybe even you cussed like that might have been you actually cussing it's, it happens it's, once in his life and it, it was is, then yeah it was this mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh yeah and it's preceded by the uh you know drop your cable and the narrator says way ahead of you and and then it finishes by and subscribe to direct tv <laughs> not an effing chance yeah 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 definitely uh ian what about you um i just today might want to step out for a minute while i tell you how amazing you are and i love this entire video and i forgot who was writing what and i was like oh this isn't aaron one like this has just got your Aww. style all over it it's awesome it's so good oh, however thanks. however you missed an opportunity Tell me about it. The the like the bold, overworked apost- the overworked apostrophe uh-huh. was my favourite sin of the whole thing. But I don't know why you didn't award it an apos trophy. Nice. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I can't handle but this. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> the whole video was great. I love opening strong with a brick Tamland um reference, which is something I don't know why we don't do it more with the amount of lamp sins that we do. Um mm-hmm. so that was great. Um yeah, love the love the whole thing. It's great. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. This this is one of my favorite. There there is that dual thing that happens where you write on your own and you're like, oh, I need some somebody like to bounce off of. It's like a little weird. And then there's that other thing where it's like, but yeah. look, look, it's all mine. It's all mine, <laughs> world. I this did is that. all mine. I did yeah. this. Um. So yeah. So there you go. And uh, so ends uh, the run of Aaron commercials. <laughs> <laughs> there's one that more. was like. There's there one, one more. There's one more I've done, okay. uh, and for whatever reason, hasn't been produced. Probably because it's terrible. Uh, but uh, but no, yes, there's... so it, it's interesting too because those are chosen so sort of at random. Like um, Chris will go into the pool of scripts and kind mm-hmm. of pull the ones he wants, and he just happened to like grab quite a few. So just to clarify for everyone that's curious, Aaron isn't the sole writer for commercial sins. <laughs> uh, it just so happens he's had a really strong run, and yeah. Yeah. And they've all been really, really good. So actually, you know what? Yeah, you're the new writer for com- congratulations. Oh, no, this is why congratulations. I do, this, is, <laughs> this is why when I do laundry, I do it terribly. Uh <laughs> just set fire to it. Oh no, someone else <laughs> should oh, do no, my laundry. I'm terrible now. At laundry. Oh, no. Guess someone else will have to do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh there we go. Uh, all right, let's move into TV Sins. Uh we're doing Rick and Morty, but it's not the new season. You thought you had escaped Rick and Morty, but no. Um But in fact, this has been ready for a while. Uh, This is season two, episode five, Get Schwifty. Uh, Danae, Ian, and Jonathan all writing on this one. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, this was back kind of when we were still testing whether Ian could read and write. Good, (laughs) good. uh, I failed. So. Jonathan Which made was, me overqualified. Jonathan was the lead on this one. And then I um, took Ian's sins, combined them with my own, did some cuts, and then it went over to Jonathan, went through another round of cuts. So this was this was months back uh, when we were really kind of just trying to kind of test and see if Ian was going to be a good fit for the team. Spoiler alert, like no he's still here. <laughs> yeah, but no pressure at all felt like that. I mean, looking back on it, I'm glad I didn't realize that at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard to be funny yeah. when you're under pressure. 
Uh, who wants to be start funny. this one off? Who wants to be start? funny, Ian? It's your you start, and you have to be funny. No pressure. Yeah. Go first, Ian. Be um, very funny. I, uh, 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 I, uh, yep, that's hilarious. Well done. Good. Um, L-O-L. So my first <laughs> <laughs> L- literal LOL. Um, I yeah, my first note was how the hell has this video not come out yet? Because it was so so long ago. Um, but are we doing the whole what we think about Rick and Morty? Or have, we, <laughs> have we covered that enough that we all understand it's a TV show that's hard to sin, but we do it yeah. anyway? Yeah, I, don't, I yeah. mean, if you have something I mean, new to say, feel free. But no, it I is interesting not. because this is a different season, right? So, mm-hmm. did you feel like this had a different vibe to it? Now that we've gone through this most recent season, do you feel like it has a different vibe to it? Yeah, yeah. Everything in this feels tame compared to the most current season. Right. That's how well, I feel. That, that's too. the big takeaway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah, were, the- there was no incest in in this one that I remember. <laughs> yeah. Hardly any horse. Um, Hardly shenanigans as well. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> this um, is the, this is the one yeah. in case uh, you don't know uh, where a giant head uh, invades Earth and forces them into a multi planet uh, reality television like singing based reality television show. Uh, is that is results the episode, so. in the most lackluster song saving the day? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm amazed that. You, Aaron, wasn't writing on this because I took this as a personal I'm going to troll Aaron script as much as possible <laughs> because it's just a big reality TV show mm-hmm. on yeah in in Rick I and Morty form. I felt yeah. that I felt Good. that when I did the narration. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, no, the scenes that I like, um, Earth getting head is a is just a, such a solid open mm-hmm. because it's it's right there on the screen. Um, I think that was I think that was Danae's, wasn't it? We had like a back and forth with something. But yeah, that was really good. That's hilarious. Um, hitting a soft 16. Oh, my um, goodness. Just one of those wrong. sins where I hated myself. Wrong. <laughs> so wrong. And yet so right. Because- it's and so, it, went, it went through like three rounds of cuts too. We all approved it. <laughs> yes. So many eyes went on that. And I was like, either they don't understand the sin or they're fine with it. Um, but that got um, a bit of love in the comments oh, as well. Yeah. Deservedly it, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's so wrong. As it's lo- so it, wrong. Also with a request for a raise for you. I believe somebody in the comments was like, whoever wrote oh. that sin deserves a huge raise. Uh, Give so. that man a raise for suggesting I get a raise. Raises for everybody. <laughs> yes, exactly. You get a raise. Uh, yeah, I love it. Um, so the universe sin that I had for this was around the talking heads. So there is so much that has to happen for that sin to work. So this is, um, they're talking about how Rick and Morty are their only chance to write a good song. And I was like, they, they can't be the only option. And their logic in the show is that everybody at the Grammys died. They they got blown up. So mm-hmm. there's no musicians left, apart from people that weren't at the Grammys. So it wasn't just looking for people that hadn't won at the Grammys, but it was looking for artists that hadn't even been nominated, mm-hmm. which there's not very many. So I, I list them in the, in the scene. The Spice Girls were surprising. And at the very bottom of the list was the talking heads. And I just, I sat back in my chair and I was like, well, I'll just delete the rest of my script and just submit the ones in then. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. It's so good. So much has to happen. The, the show has to be about talking, a literal talking head. It has to be a music competition. Everyone at the Grammys has to be dead. And they have to be searching for people that haven't been nominated for a Grammy for that to work. And then in our world, we need a band called The Talking Heads that wasn't nominated for a Grammy. So perfect. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So, so good. So good. Um, and then just the continual trolling of of making the narrator be really excited for the, the UK version, the Australian version, <laughs> and the 988 seasons of, yep. of this show, which I feel like you didn't need to act. That was just, yep, yep. I'd watch this. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'd be totally down. <laughs> uh, Danae, what about you? Uh, yes, I agree. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, no, I liked the uh, golf sin because I think all of us tried to write a golf joke. The opening sequence, you know, having like some golfing situation happening. Yeah. Um, but the sin that was selected was uh, it was like the lead ins. Hey, golf is easy now. And then the sin is, and yet despite the surrounding explosion and cataclysm, still unspeakably boring. And I just love sinning golf. I really do, mostly because I actually don't enjoy golf. Is that a surprise though? No. <laughs> I don't no, think that's a surprise. I, mm. I, I nearly put like a comma, sorry, Jeremy, at the end of it because <laughs> it's quite personal. <laughs> yeah. Um, I liked the sin um, about uh, the probability of every, like all the astronauts are definitely dead. And then the, the sin is like everyone on Earth except orbiting astros- astronauts <laughs> survives this. I thought that was really clever. Yeah. It's so good. 
Um, and then I really liked the um, the flesh curtains oh. sin, which is going to be part of my comments section. Oh, nice. Um, which was really fun. Oh, there was also another one that you wrote, Ian. Didn't you like measure helium in this one? Yeah, that's what I've got for keeping tabs. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, I did so. a okay. deep, deep dive on okay, helium we'll talk and hydrogen. About that later then. <laughs> As one does. As one sure. does. There you go. That's Rick and Morty. Get schwifty. Oh, uh, you guys you guys pretty much mentioned everything that I had. I wanted to talk about being targeted because I felt it and I was okay with it. Uh, <laughs> and so I had those written down. And also even there was another sin that was like inappropriate joke teller. Okay, now I just feel attacked. Like the acknowledgement that the, the people were uh, us <laughs> that were being uh, given to the, the talking head gods. Yeah, uh, movie talker that... and inappropriate joke mm-hmm. teller. I was like, it's literally the entire yeah. Cinema Sins team. <laughs> I continue to wonder if there's somebody on that writing staff that is into our stuff because they're just some of those winks, right? And I Mm -hmm. I could be completely wrong. I know it's like one of those things where it's like, of course you feel that way because you love the stuff you do, mm-hmm. but um, and you see what you want to see. You see what you yeah, want to see. Uh, but recognition. They've literally used our easy button sin in an episode this year. Like they've, you know, like it's just. Now listen, it's it's funny stuff, and so many people can think of the same thing. It's just one of those. It's just sometimes I'm just like, oh, that really seems like you're taking our thing. If they go, <laughs> if they say roll commercials, we'll know for sure. But, uh, Wait, but they until- stick like. Is this like <laughs> when you like are watching TV and the actress or whomever like looks at the screen and they're, and you're sitting in your home living room and you're like she's looking at me. <laughs> Is this yeah. like that? Yes, pretty yes, much. Yes, yeah. If they much. put like a coffee machine in there that's, <laughs> that's talk, right that gets played over a sentimental moment, then we'll know. Hundred yeah, percent. Then we'll know for sure. Uh, all right, let's move into the Simpsons, uh, season six, episode six, Treehouse of Horror five. Speaking of horrors, horror. Uh, this is an Aaron Jonathan script. Uh, we wrote on this one. This is a tradition. We have done uh, this every... No, no, no. We started this. We did a bunch of Last them in a row. Year? Last year mm-hmm. for Halloween, we did the first four. Uh, and so we're continuing this as a tradition now, doing the fifth. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I guess... Uh, let's, Jonathan. What does Jonathan have to say about uh, this one? I'm not Jonathan. Uh, yes, correct. I am also not Jonathan. I too. I'm not Jonathan. Okay, but Jonathan did say, um, I have not seen anywhere close to all of the Treehouse of Horror episodes, but I'm not, uh, oh, I'm not even sure I've seen one since the early aughts. But of those ones I've seen, this is 100% my favorite. The Shining is simply seven or eight of the funniest minutes ever to be on television. And the other two stories aren't slouching either. I almost said louching for some mm, reason, mm-hmm, but yes. the word is slouching. The running gag of Willie getting axed in the back, which we gladly took a sin off for, is another highlight of this episode. I loved being trolly towards Twilight Zone and Outer Limits fans, and yes, Danae, there are many, dozens even. I also enjoyed trolling myself in the one sin. Aaron had some awesome simple sins in this one. I especially love the one regarding Glenn Ford movies, and my favorite might be uh, on the show. My favorite might be when on the show it says there's nothing wrong with your television set and the sin is you could possibly know i'm can't read today by the way (laughs) you could possibly know if this is a true statement the simpsons are always fun episodes to sin and always give me a nice shot of nostalgia which these days is awesome yeah i agree uh this is my favorite treehouse of horror as well the shinning has a lot to do with that um but the, he's right, front to back. This is just a really funny episode, and it, it also is in that like Simpsons just really gearing into like some of the best TV ever created moment that they had. You know, like that season four through eight, you know, four through nine kind of run that they had is just incredible. Uh, and this was right in the in the middle of that. So I really enjoy this episode. It was really fun to sin. Um, all the stuff Jonathan mentioned was great. I, I did want to mention there are some times where we like help each other out and combine things. There are other times where we write the same sin. Jonathan and I had one of those on this one. The sin about um, fi- the piece of cake, finding it odd that there's a piece of, you know, an entire cake sitting in front of you and you're not eating that instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, we both wrote basically the same sin for that, which I thought was fun because. It's not necessarily something that is meant to jump out, but it jumped out at both oh. of us. It's like, why are yeah. you cannibalizing right now instead of uh, eating a piece of cake? Uh, and then the other one was he had written something about uh, how swiftly these people went to just cannibalizing the children. 
And there were enough like hard C sounds in it that I was like, I think I can make this alliterative. And so it took that sin and turned it into quickly capitulating to killing and cannibalizing kids. Capitulating. Um, so, so yeah. So I've, I always love that kind of stuff. That's the teamwork makes the dream work stuff, right? Like where mm. it's like, you know, here's a good idea. Here's how I can sharpen that. Here's, here's an idea. Here's how you can sharpen it. You know, I just, I love that kind of stuff. So I wanted to mention those. You know, just for those of us, you listening who might not know what capitulate means i i mean i do obviously know that but i just looked it up just to make sure that i got it correct mm -hmm. <clears throat> for mm -hmm. all of yeah. you who don't know um it means cease to resist an opponent or an unwelcome demand surrender <laughs> very nice but you know what in movies you know when someone's like coming at you and they're like surrender that sounds so much better than capitulate you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. I don't know. That would make me scratch my head more. I'd be like, what? What? What, what do you want me to do? <laughs> right? But did that's, you say, that's, a, that's a comedy, though. Did you say copulate? What? What are we doing now? <laughs> what is it? Is it caffeinate? No, I'm fine. I've had one. Capillaries? What? Those are copulate. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I've had one. Uh, so. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> All right. Uh, Danae, what about you? <laughs> uh, what are we talking about? The Simpsons, Treehouse of oh. Horror. Five. Treehouse of Horror. <laughs> oh, no. Are we doing this again? I actually um, have my notes somewhere, and I can't find them. So come back to me. Come All right, Ian, me. what do you got? What do you got? Um, yeah, I'm the same. Like This is the best for me, Treehouse of Horror. And it's when you say that, it's the one that I immediately think of. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's so good. And that run between season four, four and eight, etc. Like that, it was so good. It I gave the show goodwill for like ten years after that <laughs> that it yeah. just didn't deserve um, until I eventually gave in because you just hope it's gonna it's gonna get back to that and you, you're gonna see that again. But, every once in a while, yeah. I still watch it. By the way, I've watched every single episode of The Simpsons, uh, even mm. into what is it, season thirty one now, something like that. Mm. Is it more than yeah, that? I'm Maybe way, it's more than off. that. Yeah, it's like 37. Anyhow, I've watched every episode. And occasionally they do kind of, you know, reach some really fun heights. Um, Pete Holmes, the comedian Pete Holmes, wrote a couple episodes recently that I thought were really, really good. Uh, mm. So I, it's still it's still got its its days. But, man, anytime you do something for more than three Come decades. On, forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. How do you keep that fresh when... Bart is 45 I mean, it's, years it's old. It's a question we ask ourselves, right? You know, we're we're going on a decade with CinemaSense. Like, how mm. do we how do we stay fresh? How do we keep doing things? Um, yeah, so. we're beyond our standard seven season run, <laughs> which is when <laughs> yeah. they tend to yeah. stop especially on YouTube. Else. Yeah, um, yeah. So the just so my notes on this turned way more into how great the show that this episode is <laughs> sure. rather than the video itself. So like the the genius of the donut do joke that Homer oh, is so basically good. in his perfect universe had he just waited a couple of seconds because they don't understand what donuts are despite being surrounded by them. Um, mm -hmm. It just rains donuts. It's so good. Yeah. Oh, it's the best. Um, right. Which one of you old people did the Fortnite reference because that <laughs> stuck out like a sore thumb? I was like, I wasn't on this script, so I didn't I, write it. I wrote, that's one of the ones that I had too. I was like, and I thought, Oh, I wonder if Daniel wrote on this script. Yeah, like, did you get one of the kids to do this? Because it was like, oh my god, this is like a, this is as good as a Fortnite dance or as stale, as uh, stale, stale, stale as a stale, Fortnite stale. dance. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's, stale. Okay, that I made get, sense. All okay, right, so this this is this fun thing where you get old enough that your children, children. are yes, the ones that's what in I pop mm -hmm. culture. So mm -hmm. I I have watched the Fortnite dances become a thing and then get old and then be very old and now whenever you see a Fortnite dance in some piece of pop culture there's a lot of eye rolling and so yeah. i when i was thinking of what would be a good simile uh for um for being stale um that's what my I kids reactions uh no, I, I liked it that that was good. So. it's something that i wouldn't have put in because i'd be like oh no i can't pull that off i'm i'm too old for it <laughs> <laughs> um the two more guard dogs that can't catch Homer fucking Simpson. It's one of those things that's on screen, but again, like the cake, you don't necessarily think of sinning, but you're like, mm. what is wrong with these dogs that they can't catch this man? Yeah. They really, yeah. they're, they're not doing their jobs right. Um, and of course, Inside Out, the musical, it's mm -hmm. another universe sin that's, it's it's right there. They are Inside Out. They are yep. musicaling. Yep, exactly. Yeah, uh, I found video. my notes. Nice. Um, I liked the setting the front facing child seat that was in the front seat. That was great. 
um, good catch. In fact, when I saw it, I was like, is it in the back seat where they have like an opening on the front seat? Oh, and no. And it's actually in the back. And no, it is not. Correct. I genuinely laughed um, when the grandfather figure is missing. And then the <laughs> sin is like, and I would have known he was missing just by the lack of casual farting. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, this is going to sound so fucked up, but. I have so many fond memories of my grandfather farting, <laughs> you know, and I miss him because he's been gone for several years now. Mm -hmm. And there was this one time we were in this bookstore because my grandfather was a bookseller and he uh, like started libraries and stuff. He was just this incredible person. So whenever we would travel together, he loved to go to the local bookstores and just browse through and see if he could find really interesting things. And I would learn from him about like the things to look for when you're looking at books. And so he was on the he was on the adjacent an aisle and i just hear him walking down the aisle like crop dusting <laughs> like, and at the time i was kind of mortified because i was younger and, and i was like oh my god he is just it that is so loud <laughs> and now i just think it's the funniest shit ever so i loved that sin because it reminded me of my grandfather nice. um, that's amazing but yeah and then I also enjoyed the Tony Awards. Like everyone knows it takes place in July or June or whenever it is. So it's like, it's, it's so funny. It's stupid because I don't even know what the Tony Awards are. <laughs> yeah, I love doing that shit. where it's like the, the narrator is so oblivious to his own, uh, you know, nitpickiness. You know, where it's like everyone knows, obviously, you know. Obviously. Th that is the attitude of the well, actually, right? Is, yeah. is just yes. how did you not know this? Um, you know, and so especially when it's these random things that really not a lot of people would have at their fingertips, you know, uh, it's it's a lot of fun. And it worked on me because I felt dumb because I didn't know if the joke was that that is obvious or it isn't. No, because no it is not it obvious. Works. Most obscure, people would yeah. not know that. Um, yeah, no. But yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm like most people in that way. Go yeah, me. Me too. I didn't know Yay. that until I looked it up. So there you go. Uh, all right, let's move into music video sins. Limp Bizkit, uh, break stuff, and this is this is going back in time. I, I like yeah, this. These, these are my favorites because uh, I'm old. Uh, is when, <laughs> when it goes. When it Just goes, get there before I did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> steal that one from you. Uh, <laughs> where it goes back in time. What did Barrett have to say about sending a uh, Limp Bizkit? Which, uh, some, by the way, here in the U.S. is limp cookie. Uh, just, just in case you, okay. you want. That's to know. good. Well, to know. What do you call a gingerbread man that <laughs> lost his legs? Ooh, is this a question. joke? I don't good know question. what. What? What do you call him? Doesn't matter. He won't limp come. Limp biscuit. Oh, got it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Set that I... one up, and you just let it hit you in the face. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow, that's how it works guys. sometimes. Like... Limp biscuit. Back to what yeah. Barrett had to say. <laughs> no, I feel like that's the end of the show. <laughs> Bye, guys. That was it. <laughs> 43 minutes that's a record uh yeah missing that very obvious setup we should just all go home <laughs> that's right I mean, just, we all need to question our own ability you do to this for a living moment. you get paid to write mm -hmm. punchlines that is true that is true <laughs> Ugh. um so barrett said some people were angry around the turn of the last century <laughs> they weren't really angry at anything just angry and their collective anger coalesced into an anger baby that was named limp biscuit and little LB personified the anger of all of these angry people for many years before disappearing into the ether, since no one is angry anymore. It's basically the plot of Ghostbusters 2 is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. And that's what that's what Barry had to say about nice. that. Nice. Awesome. I love going back and watching the old music video sins, mm -hmm. um, or the old music videos, rather. Mm-hmm. Just the difference in how they're produced or what was interesting to the eye, you know, at that time. Or even just like the quality of video or the effects that are different, the clothing. Mm -hmm. It's just really neat to see what we've been able to capture that we can kind of go back and, and look at. Like, can you imagine if like in the Victorian era, there were people that were making music videos? Um, They were. <laughs> it was live theater. But imagine that it was, you know recorded and we can go back and watch what they thought was humorous or what they thought was an interesting mm -hmm. quote unquote camera angle and how different things would have been i don't know i just find this stuff really fascinating yeah. not that limp biscuit is art oh, i guess it is sure i think yeah. some people would disagree with Subjective, it Subjective, yeah but it's yeah it's very uh that, it's one of the reasons i love to watch these i think that's what you're, you're kind of saying too aaron it's like yeah. a wink and nod into the past yeah yeah mm -hmm. there's some really interesting stuff there um, and we get to send Polly shore showing up so that's fun yeah buddy buddy just the 10 sins for no reason that's that was in the uh in the um 
the script for this one it's like the the prompt for the editors is like Polly Shore shows up and then it's just add 10 cents for no reason without comment <laughs> like yep nice that's good shit um i also like the non-consensual ventral quizzing mm-hmm. sure yeah that was a good choice of ending on that word ventriloquizing quinizing quinizing it's called quinoa it's called quinoa uh today and casetella casetella yeah uh all right what about you ian um i have four notes one of them was the gingerbread joke (laughs) 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 take that one off um, the next one was I like Lim Biscuit because of that Mission Impossible song. Um, now I know why you want to hate me. Even though everyone hates that, I really uh-huh. yeah it, it, it did a thing and I liked it. Nice. Uh, the, the Dr. Dre bashing was great. I just the it's such an insult that he wouldn't get out of the car. Like, dude, come on. I genuinely believe that's what happened. He turned up in the car. He's like, can I do it from right here? I was like, we're just glad you turned up. And he he just did. Whereas Eminem is like out just like doing stuff and mm-hmm. just getting into it. Um, so that was a great observation and the multi-sin rant about the chainsaws that's not how chainsaws work Mm -hmm. and just have you never used one you will destroy a human you're not going to be slicing off anything Um, Mm -hmm. that just made me chuckle because sometimes you can do a sin that's a bit repetitive but revisiting that just it it elevated it it was really good yeah Uh, Limp Bizkit completely missed me really Uh, it was just not something that appealed to me um, I, I heard the songs, um, and, uh, I'm just not an angry person <laughs> so, to, to put it lightly. Uh, and so I never tuned into that rage or whatever that was, uh, foe or elsewise just didn't appeal to me. Um, I remember there was a song about doing it for the nookie. That's basically all huh? I remember about, what? uh, Limp Bizkit. So, um, so yeah, uh, I, I vaguely remember this song, but not much. As far as the video goes, though, man, I laughed a lot. Um, the the corn, the only one that you guys haven't mentioned is the corn sin, where <laughs> did Jonathan Davis have to put down the cob of corn he was eating, fly into the set on his corn cob shaped jet, take a corn shower, apply <laughs> corn butter to his skin, and snort a line of corn just to show up for fifteen seconds of the song? I, it just made me laugh. There's a Smurf thing going on there that I, it always gets me when we Smurf a word and uh, mm-hmm. and just keep Smurf. keep using it. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to mention that one. All right, let's move on to Cinema Sins. We'll start with another Bond movie, uh, Die Another Day. This is uh, Pierce Brosnan's. Right, that is the Bond theme, of course. That, that today yeah, is. good. They must have done a different one in America. <laughs> no, no, that's it. That's the that is the overall yeah. Bond theme. You hear it in all the movies. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the Bond theme. Uh, anyhow, this is the Pierce Brosnan final Bond. So we're kind of going through and doing everybody's final Bond uh, over the last few weeks. Um, Jonathan, Ian, and Chris all wrote on this one. Did Jonathan have anything to say? What were some of his thoughts on this? He said, Die Another Day is the is in the running with A View to Kill as being the worst James Bond film. It's as awful as Ian's opinion is on where Chief Miles O'Brien belongs <laughs> in the Star Trek universe. Nice, nice, good. It's as yeah, awful as Aaron's view on crime procedurals. It's as awful as Danae's... <laughs> Well, I can't think of anything because Danae is perfect. <laughs> oh, my oh, God, Jonathan. Listen up. What an asshole. Bravo. <laughs> I rather enjoyed that. Um, I think Ian said it at one point during the edit review. It was the movie that just kept on giving, and it really did. Did I mention this movie is awful? I had a lot of fun on this one, and Ian's script could have just been the script. I think the sins are 75% his. Some of my favorite moments are when the movie mentions the UN embargo and that Bond understands it because he studied at Oxford and Harvard. And the sin is, is Moon suggesting you need a college level of education or higher to understand that the University of Nebraska, to understand what the University of Nebraska is. I also so trolly. <laughs> I also loved, loved Ian noticing this marking on a diamond that a character in the movie is trying to tell us is GG, but it doesn't look anything like that. And the sin ends with fuck you and your GG. Could not stop laughing every time I reviewed the edit. 
<laughs> I'll stop with those two because I don't want to take anyone else's. But these Bond films I've worked on have been a blast and this might be my favorite. Nothing to do with this, but if you wanted to see a good sequel, go check out Venom. <laughs> wait, what, what, wait. <laughs> this is... <laughs> How has he managed to do that? He's not here. <laughs> this is literally as if he's here. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Well, maybe I can say that for Beyond the Sins. That was so good. <laughs> because it keeps going. So I'll I'll say that for Beyond the Sins. That's amazing. That's the best. That's amazing. That's so good. Uh, let's see. Ian, you were in on this one. What are some of your thoughts on uh, doing this Bond run as our UK, uh, you know, ambassador? Yeah, I mean, the, the English are famous for being a bit modest, but I hope you guys brought your umbrellas because I'm just going to masturbate everywhere for 10 minutes <laughs> because I think I really did well on this script. <laughs> so it's going to be a lot of, I'm great. <laughs> nice. So I've had a run of Bond films. <laughs> yes, Delano has an umbrella. Um, yeah, I've had a run of Bond films now. And I this film is objectively bad and I unapologetically love it. I mm -hmm. really enjoy this film. Um, it's a similar feeling to how I have with all of the, the Brosnan films. Um, they get increasingly ridiculous and massively varying quality, but I love each and every one of them. It's And Die Another Day in particular is just a farewell to Bonkers Bond because we now go into Casino Royale, which is my favourite Bond film, but it's not serious. the bond that we know mm -hmm. it's serious yeah. it's yeah. the born identity this is the last of the bonkers bonds um i've got a, I, just writing on all of the bond films i've had so so much fun because there is it's just venting all of this frustration that i've had about bond movies into a into a creative and productive outlet and just mm -hmm. like the 007 thing it's 007 it's bugged me since i was i think <laughs> six <laughs> it's just like, why is 007 like ian stop correcting him and enjoy the film please yeah, um, but yeah, that's that's my experience with Bond. Um, yeah. In terms of the sins, um, what do we have? The where was she hiding that? And where was she hiding that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so much fun, so good, so good. Uh, James Bondage. There's a lot of like one line zingers in here, which are just All right, so good. Listen, I don't know if it was you. I genuinely don't. But I'm calling this one out because this this is my favorite pun I've seen in a video uh, in a long time. The uh, money penny shot. Like, oh, that was Jonathan. So good. Bravo, Perfect. Jonathan. Yeah. Bravo. Like that. That was such a because. It says is it says what's happening, money, money, penny shot, and then has a money shot, you know, pun, yeah, and then also puns on the idea of a money shot. Like this is a big moment yeah. in the mood. Like I just, yeah, I was really impressed it's with three that. Three or four layers of punny. Yeah, um, bravo, Jonathan. Diamonds are diamonds are face ever. That was Jonathan as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's just some great zingers in here. I'm not going to go through too many of them, but. Um, just the the very sexual way that Bond was trying to find the button on that wall. And it's like, <laughs> funny that Agent Fuckslot can't find the spot. And he's just like, the button is clearly there. There's only one place. Either yeah. that button works or it doesn't, so push yeah. it, because it's not anything yeah. else. Um, and learning new words, uh, biblioclasm. Um, I just had a feeling that the book burning and stuff like that has been going on for so long. There must be a word for it. And there is, of course. Um, but yeah, this is, it was such a fun script to write on because it's, this could have been a, a 30, 35 minute video and yeah. so many people in the comments were like, how is this not a two parter? Um, and it, it really, really easily could have been. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen this movie in a while, so I don't have a lot to say about the movie itself other than Brosnan was a, uh, I mean, he was kind of my bond in that, like, that's when I was watching Bond movies, uh, when yeah. I started watching them was, was Brosnan. And so because of that, it's kind of my view on him is a little clouded. However, having gone back and watched, uh, all of the Bond movies now, um, this year, uh, other than the, the ones I had already seen, which are the Brosnan and Craig ones. Um, I, I, I really, I don't dig his performance as much. I like some of the other bonds a lot better for the way that they can combine the serious with the humor. He's, it's just a very light Bond portrayal, and mm -hmm. uh, it works a couple times, but in this one, I don't think it really works. Uh, as far as sins that you did not say, because um, I had several of those, especially the where was she hiding that? Where was she hiding that? Uh, you know, just the, <laughs> that follow-up is so perfect. Uh, the don't say saved by the bell, don't say saved by the bell, don't say saved by the bell. Uh, <laughs> 
is so perfect because I just had that experience in one of the Timothy Dalton bonds uh, that I recently watched where he has a guy hanging off of his uh, foot and he cuts the laces. And this is like in a plane, you know, thousands of feet in the air. He cuts the laces to where the guy, you know, falls off and takes his boot with him. And in my brain, I'm going, please don't say I gave him the boot. Please don't say I gave him the boot. Please don't. And then, of course, I gave him the boot. So I just had had that experience where it was like, you know. And the same thing happens in A License to Kill when all of the money is um, is in the... It's covered in blood because the guy's exploded in mm-hmm. the like decompression tank. And I was like, don't say launder it. Don't say launder it. Don't say launder it. Yeah. What are you going to do with the money? Launder it. <laughs> it. It's just, you could have that in every single scenes yeah, video. Yeah, it's so, so it's good. perfect. It's perfect. Uh, and then the other one was just the thing that drives me crazy about invisible objects that aren't invisible because <sighs> we need to see them, which usually we don't sin because the, the piece of content is... You know, like they're they're doing something they have to do so that the audience can see it. But in this case, it's the perfect place to sin it because the, there's a person using it that has to see it to use it. And so the idea yeah. of if it's visible enough to drive remotely, <laughs> it's visible enough to be completely useless uh, is yes. so true and is the perfect place to sin something like that. So um, really enjoyed that one as well credit to jonathan on the invisible car one because there was one that he wrote which was bond is and i missed it bond is crouching behind the invisible car (laughs) why is he hiding behind something that's invisible how does he not know how dumb this is and it's not like accidental the way he like tries to open the door is so that he doesn't get seen through the window that's yeah all things invisible yeah it's true. So good. Uh, Danae, for those listening to the podcast, has now balanced a cheese it box on her head as my uh, umbrella, and oh. mm-hmm. and has done it in in the box is obviously like half full or quarter full. So she's used the bottom of the box as the weight, so it looks like she's using the force. Uh, it, it is wrong. It, it's yeah. really impressive. Um, Thank you. And really, if you want to see this, this is the primary reason to become a member of the Sin Club. <laughs> you can go to patreon.com <laughs> slash cinemasins right now uh, if you want to see this visual. Uh, we'd love to yeah. have you. Yes, I keep expecting it to just crash onto my face, but it hasn't yet. So I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> although just so that you know, I am wearing headphones and so I have a headband. So that's helped me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cheat. I'm not interested in now. This. Don't <laughs> sign up for the Patreon. This is a lie. <laughs> you guys mentioned almost all the ones that I had written down. The bling bling goes the bang bang. I liked that one. Mm-hmm. And then there was one where it was a series of like bleeping. And we've done that on TV since. And so I really love to see it on the main channel. And I'm sure it's been done before on main channel but it's kind of one of those where as a tv sins writer <laughs> <laughs> this box is about to go <laughs> and i'm not gonna stop it um so it was just kind of funny to see like or to, uh, all the bleeps and you just wonder what the narrator is saying mm-hmm. and the sin, so the sin was well i prefer the the term smug beep 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 but youtube won't let me say that anymore <laughs> and i just thought that was clever oh. and, and there goes, goes the box um, nice. i didn't I didn't write anything for that. I just said, Jeremy, take your pick. So I have no idea what he said, but it's that's the beauty of it. It Man, could I be would, this if, caravan uh, ran a marathon and it Man, the beats make it great. It up. That would have been funny. All right, let's move into interview with a vampire. This is a Barrett Ian script. What did Barrett have to say about IWAV? He said <laughs> <laughs> this is a vampire movie. Everyone knows vampires don't exist. Why would someone bite another person and drink their blood? Gross. <laughs> Having said that, this is the fuckiest movie that wants to fuck but never fucks. I think that's accurate. I think that is an accurate description of yeah, this movie. That's yeah. fair. That works. Yeah, mm-hmm. that works definitely. Ian? <laughs> Ian, on to you. <laughs> um, I, I watched this movie for the first time a few weeks ago because um, I've got a friend that adores it. And I was like, okay. That's cool. Let's watch it. It's not a film to watch with somebody that passionately loves it because they're constantly looking at you, hoping that you're enjoying it just as much. And that puts so much pressure on your experience that I couldn't help but hate it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this time round, I enjoyed it more. It's it's such a weird film. It's just it's a Tom Cruise performance that's just unhinged. It's you kind of think you know what you're getting when you watch Tom Cruise. You you do not when you watch this film, and even. Brad Pitt is going for something and I I still don't know whether this movie is objectively good or not but 
I, I, I enjoyed it, question mark, I think. <laughs> I definitely enjoyed writing it anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I love the the love we gave for Stan Winston in this. It's nice to acknowledge his contribution to why movies look like movies in the basically in the entire of the nineties. Like we mm-hmm. have so much, and genuine. They've said it on the Syncast a lot, but so much died with him. I, I think there was just so much that he didn't share, and so much that we'll just we may we'll never see again quite in that way. I mm-hmm. think um, I enjoyed Barrett trolling um, Jeremy. By saying that this movie's so boring that the narrator has time to paint Chris naked. Because that could have been <laughs> anyone's name, but it had to be Chris, didn't it? And so now I have the image of Jeremy um painting Chris naked. Um mm-hmm. yeah. As if it's the first Which, time. But yeah, continue. Well, on. yeah, exactly. It's now that I have the context of having t- talked to both of them, it adds an extra layer of I now know. Yeah, anyway. Um <laughs> my oh, one of my favorite things to do is taking a really thoughtful sin and then adding a really dumb also on the end of it so my thoughtful sin was when they're choosing to dump um lestat in the swamp and i'm like the sin is like no burn him chop him up do something with him you don't understand how powerful he is just do anything (laughs) other than this and And then then you add jungle (laughs) cruise (laughs) it's the dumbest (laughs) sin after that because it's a great point so hard but oh also so just and it's so in the moment as well because if this had been delayed six months like apparently some stuff is that doesn't quite work as well because we're still close enough to jungle cruise for that to be in in people's minds um mm-hmm. so yeah really thoughtful sin and then also dumb sin love it so good yeah yeah, yeah i agree that is a, that is a fun <laughs> fun little one-two punch uh i don't remember watching this movie i know i have but it didn't stick with me enough to uh remember it i i love the people in this movie but i just i don't have a lot to say about the movie itself Uh, Mm. other than again vampires aren't that interesting to me so that's probably why i don't remember i think uh, i think we we are quite there with vampires now yeah yeah um so i had to mention the kool-aid man sin uh, laughed very, very hard at that one. Um, that the, the Kool Aid Man was going to bust, <laughs> bust through. And be like, oh yeah, um, very nice. Uh, I love it anytime a sin gets a hey. Acting is hard sometimes. Um, like that, <laughs> that that false empathy uh, for bad performances is wonderful. And then all the different places uh, where you go that prostitutes just show up. Uh, that list was so <laughs> funny. So funny. Uh, calling a gaggle of prostitutes in case you didn't a know gaggle. what a group of prostitutes yeah, were perfect. called. They're called a gaggle uh, as they should be. Uh, and then the, uh, <laughs> the sin that was going to be kids, but then at the end decided to do something less controversial. <laughs> no. Like, I don't know. Women. And like, that's just the, the sin is women. And that's it's less so controversy. Trolly. It is so trolly. It is And that was that was the note in the narrator um column on the spreadsheet. It was this is so trolly. Yeah. That's like just Barrett apologizing. Yeah. That's when you know he's gone too far when he feels <laughs> the need to apologize. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to it we'll get to it someday, but uh Danae cut one of my uh men sins when I tried to send men. So um mm-hmm. So oh, yeah, so it's always interesting. Dang. Uh Danae, what about you interview with a vampire? Uh I haven't seen this. Um uh so but you know, looking at beautiful men on the screen, I think I remember that being a big draw for this one. And mm-hmm. I remember this being referenced many, many times when talking about Dunst. Kirsten. Kirsten. Mm-hmm. Kirsten, Kirsten, Kirsten yeah. Kier or Kerr? I think it's Kirsten, but Okay. I could be wrong. Because I didn't realize with you know i think maybe was spider-man there was a conversation that i was having with someone on spider-man because isn't she mm-hmm. doesn't she play i believe so yeah mary yeah. jane mary jane mary yeah jane. and they're just and the, the the chat and the blogs and all this was about like just other films that she's been in and i remember looking at a picture of her in this and going holy shit she's so little so it was neat to see the scene um even though we we're sitting it where she was like giving it to mm-hmm. uh tom cruise that was cool yeah yeah it's a great performance it's really yeah good. so but i had a fun time uh watching this one um uh let's see the oh the sin where um so what do you do and he's like i'm a vampire and the credits notwithstanding just because lois it, lewis is a vampire doesn't mean that that's what he does it's like someone asking me what i do and <laughs> replying i'm an asshole <laughs> like like that <laughs> narrows it down i thought that was really <laughs> clever yeah um and then i really liked the sin about um 
when the woman's wrist was like bleeding on the couch and it's like god don't just leave your hand down there to drip on the sofa that's a waste of precious blood his gla- his glass was even full and then like my god the things this job has me complaining about <laughs> <It was> just, <laughs> just that sort of reflective part of what we do as writers like we're complaining about blood leaking on a couch mm-hmm. i thought that was really really uh fun there was also a sin where there's like writing is it on a mausoleum or something uh yeah and- it's inside of the theater or something wherever the paris vampires are yeah and so they're like running up the stairs um brad and kirsten's character are running up the stairs or something and it like pauses for a split second and points out the words on the wall and it was like remember you are moral and the sin kind of goes on to what was actually said on the wall and how basically this would have been much better if you would have said it this way versus that way and there are certain times when we make the narrator just geek out on these certain topics and i love the idea that when it comes to like what would this be what was the language Did it was even, in latin what was it latin yeah that he's like some latin expert <laughs> suddenly, <Yeah. laughs> like suddenly the narrator is a latin expert it's like actually, mm-hmm. well, actually. <laughs> it should have been written yeah this is a dead language but actually <laughs> i know all about it yeah uh, well, i kind the- of had that in keeping tabs ish um, okay because of course someone on the internet has translated that entire thing and mm. it's yeah it's it's a eulogy for a chap that's basically saying you need to appreciate your life and remember it like remember if nothing else remember that you are moral but it was the guy on the internet like, oh, which should probably give him credit but he was like in this sense in latin moral doesn't make sense and it should be mortal and it's a great thing that they've put in the film that they don't acknowledge because it would it means a lot to um, to Brad Pitt's character as well. He needs to remember that he is moral because he's debating whether he should kill humans or not. So it's just a great multi-layered thing that was worth pointing out. And sinning, of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, a couple others that really stood out to me was the sunlight one where I guess like Kirsten and some lady get obliterated by sun in some sort of like torture chamber or something. Um, but just the reflection like wouldn't the moon do the same too but the way he was like it's literally just reflecting the sunlight just this sort of way that he delivered that one i really Mm -hmm. enjoyed um and then the last one that i wrote down i enjoyed a lot more than this but the last one that i wrote down was this hilarious reference about the snot bubble because the idea that somebody on our team has in their mind a series of scenes with distracting snot bubble is just amazing to me um, so apparently there's one in Blair Witch Project, mm-hmm. and I thought that was really really funny. Yeah, that I've... wasn't even the first option. Like Blair Witch is, the, I think it was it was definitely Barrett that wrote that sin. But the no, I think it was no, it was Daniel that I can't remember. It was somebody that wrote the sin, but they didn't use that option. And someone else chimed in and said, "Well, this one's more more obvious." So having a discussion about which snot bubble is more in the pop culture consciousness is yeah. What is my job? I, it's got to be Blair Witch. That's like what the movie yeah. is known for is that scene and just the the snot coming out of her nose and just she's yeah, she's all traumatized. Yeah. I love like I like how we just all fixate on snot. Like it's so weird for snot to come out of a nose. We have noses. It's not weird. They snot. No, but it's huge. It's it's yeah. It's right there. Still can be distracting even if it's not even if it's normal. Normal things yeah. can be distracting. It's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right, let's move into Keeping Tabs. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another. (laughs) Ha ha! Oh, jeez. This is the most public yet of my many humiliations. We're each going to talk about something from uh, the sinning process of the week. Maybe some weird research we did, just some stories we want to tell, whatever the case. Totally up to you, and Ian's going to kick us off. Uh, What's your Keeping Um... Tab? Yeah, so I had the researching the artists and the the Latin text has come up. So I had to do a bit of a deep dive behind um, how many balloons would it take to lift a human. So in Get Swifty, they're getting rid of certain people. And the method of execution is we're going to attach a ton of helium balloons to them and put them into orbit and this will kill them. Or the balloons will burst and they'll die from mm-hmm. the gravity and the floor. Either way, it's such a dumb way to kill people. But I was like, well, if you're going to go there, I'm going to go there as well. And I was like, what would it take? That's my favorite thing to do is the show does something ridiculous. So, okay, it's kind of like the Mythbusters approach. Now that we've disproved it, what would it take to make this work? And 
it is an obscene amount of helium. And I thought, well, someone's going to be a bit trolly in the comments and say, well, actually, you could have used hydrogen. But no, there's not a lot of difference between hydrogen and helium. And there was a couple of other gases you could have used as well that I didn't make a note of, but they would have done an even worse job. So either way, it's more balloons than you could possibly logically attach. And at that point, it's just not worth it. Just stab them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was... <laughs> um... What was it? Uh, there was a guy uh, who did this. Um, La Lawn Chair Larry. Do you remember Lawn Chair Larry? Oh, that rings a bell. So this was in the 80s, I think. And there was somebody who uh, actually did use balloons to attach them to his lawn chair and actually took a flight. Um, so, yeah. Anyhow, that story is interesting. I, it's that's possible. Another, that's another fun one to, to, to research uh, if you want mm. to research sometime. It's Lawn Chair Larry. Spoiler alert, he's alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it worked. This worked. This worked. Uh, I guess I'll go next. The only thing I really had to research was in the DirecTV uh, script. Um, I really did a lot of handball research uh, for that handball court that he gets the eye injury <laughs> in. Because it looked like it definitely did not look like a handball court to me. And, you know, the idea that the back wall, which is in play in handball, uh, would have mm -hmm. several different, uh, you know, um, gaps and openings, including a an overlook that didn't appear to be glassed in. To me, so like, how many times are they losing their balls up into the you know overlook, <laughs> and they have to go chase them down? You know what I mean? It's just it seemed like a ridiculous. Uh, but anyways, it was fun to do the handball research and then just be specific with some of the terminology, like in the sin itself, and you know a certain kind of shot or understanding the rules um, to where you serve from, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I there's just an element you can add with that specificity that I think is really fun. So. You can become an expert very quickly and then mm -hmm. forget it within minutes. Yes, <laughs> like, definitely. I, I I wrote that. I don't know any of this. Yeah. Have you ever played handball, either of you? No. Um, technically, I think I'm calling it handball, but it's racquetball. Sorry. Uh, handball is a we different thing. We call it squash. Yeah. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, racquetball. So I played squash. Racquetball yeah, I didn't is know what handball I'm talking about. was something different, yeah. Handball is something squash different. Squash is fun. Uh, squash and racquetball uh, are mm. inside the room with a racket uh, in a very confined space feels like a very dangerous game. It's not as quite dangerous yes. as, as it feels like it is because that ball has a lot of give to it. Um, but uh, but yeah. Oh, the ones we use aren't. We use cricket balls. Just, <laughs> it's got the highest mortality rate of any of any sport. It just, it just lodges in the floor, <laughs> like on the first, <laughs> first I win! I win! He I died. have cracked the surface! <laughs> oh no, he died. Oh no, you died. Uh, Danae, what do you got for your uh, keeping tabs? Nothing for this week. All right. We'll move into the comment section. I want to know what you're thinking. I appreciate your honesty. You're a real straight shooter. You are the ones who are the ball lickers. We're going to take a look at some of your feedback. Could be in comments for videos, emails you've sent, all that kind of fun stuff. I've got an email that I'll close us with. Um, today, why don't you go first? What's your uh, comment section this week? Um, well, this one comes from Rick and Morty from Oversoul Gaming, who I believe is actually live in chat with us. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, if it's mm -hmm. pretty sure it's the same person who yeah. said, if you're bothered by flesh curtains, you should know there's an actual <laughs> development term in the gaming industry called beef gates. <laughs> <laughs> it refers to when you run into an enemy that is stronger than you can handle at that point in the game as they are intentionally placed in those locations to deter you from going to those areas too early mm -hmm, mm -hmm. beef gates yeah and now we know thank you oversoul for educating uh, all of us it's bill's um uh, bill's older muscular brother beef yep. gates. nice Perfect. So good. I'm annoyed I didn't get there first. <laughs> I think I messaged you, Danae, about flesh curtains. In the context of the Did scene, you? not Did in general. You now? It wasn't just it wasn't it wasn't Tell a, me more. I seem yeah, to it have wasn't forgotten. <laughs> something I did in my leisure time. No, it was I think I said to you, if I said flesh curtains, what does that bring to mind? And you, I think you were like immediately disgusted. And I was like, no, it's Rick and Morty. Like <laughs> I didn't know if I was being deliberate yes. like overly okay. crude or there was an actual joke there i was like oh no nobody nobody says that but yeah yeah. So yeah i'm glad i was reassured yes you yes <laughs> uh i will also reassure you um Good. thank you very nice uh have you gone ian 
and I I have I had to stop myself because I had a well actually where I was going to correct Barrett and then I thought you know what I'm going to check the YouTube comments to see if someone else did and I read my <laughs> own words being spoken back to me and I was like ah oh, yeah I am the arsehole. so it was it's the fact that Monster Energy in the Limp Biscuit video one of the scenes is I don't know what the the production team were doing but or they spent all of the budget on food and monster energy mm. and for some reason something in my brain twigged that monster energy hasn't been around that long and indeed monster energy came out in 2002 and this video was released in 99 and a chap called david in the youtube comments pointed that out very politely <laughs> <laughs> i was like you know what i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do it let's just leave him with that um and the, the un embargo somebody um took that quite personally um because the university of nebraska is actually unl or something it has a shortening that isn't UN. Mm. And surprisingly, when you look at the list of acronyms on the internet, there's not many for UN. So I just had to run with that. And the fact that it's wrong is just extra trolly and it feeds my it feeds me. So give me more rage. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh it's it's interesting. I've thought about I've thought about instituting a segment of this podcast or having some fun with the idea of grading uh commoners when they um actually us. Where mm. like because we are the nitpickers. Sometimes they're really really good. Because sometimes they're re yeah. yeah they're really good and sometimes they're right and sometimes they're mm -hmm. wrong. And I just thought about this idea of having like a you know nitpick the nitpickers segment where it's like we judge kind of like Snopes them where it's like you know you get a, yeah. a false or a true or an almost true or that kind of thing. So we may do that. But that's what that reminds me of is is you know pulling a comment going yep you're right Monster Energy uh, didn't exist. Yep. This is factually uh, correct. Factually correct. So, yes, correct. You get a, I, I, a true on that I one. I do have a positive one to end on really quick, was that it's uh, on the Dying of a Day video, um, Some uh, Thomas Crown, which was a great name for a Bond film, mm -hmm. uh, for a Brosnan performance, um, he said that GG being on the diamond was something that had bugged him since he was a kid. So it's, it's nice that... That is now out there on YouTube and that this person has been seen and That's that funny. Their, their valid concern from when they're a child has now been aired. And this is the first time I noticed it was when I was sinning. That GG is ridiculous. So it's just nice that they can probably sleep a little bit easier tonight knowing that That's the right. world knows the bullshit of the GG. How does that feel as the writer, you know, to know that you contributed that way? <laughs> I suppose it's all right. I suppose, I suppose it's fine. Well, I've had worse. Uh, <laughs> my comment section is a follow-up to an email we read on the show. Um, this comes to the picks or it didn't happen at cinemasins, uh, dot com. Um, and I love that those still exist. Thank you guys for going. Like I haven't made any new ones in a long time. Right, really, really quickly. I'm obviously new uh -huh. to, to sure. the company. Sure, I had to send an email to. Oh, we talked to... about it on the show. Yeah, we have oh, mentioned this on the show. I missed that. Sorry. Right. Yeah, yeah it uh -huh. was confusing. I had to text and I was like, "Well, which who am I emailing here?" Because <laughs> <laughs> there's like 15 Jonathan at something, and I don't know what to do. Yeah, but I was like, "This is time sensitive. I need to know now." Yes. yes. Send all. Yes. I did not realize that they were all public, like aware <laughs> on our team, and so now I'm like, "Oh my god." Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. There are god. some good ones. Our yeah, bosses teach, might teach, teach Jonathan how to use a blanket at cinemasins.com. Yeah. I think is my yeah. favorite or whatever. Like, it is. Help Jonathan be better. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I just wanted to send it to that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyhow, yes, Pixar It Didn't Happen has been one of oh our most active uh, vanity emails. Uh, and this is an email. Anytime you have a picture that you think is Probably hilarious. Probably because or... it's the easiest to remember, too. <laughs> uh, so Shit. anyhow, uh, Elizabeth had sent a uh, an email to Pixar It Didn't Happen of a snake that had invaded their dance studio. And we had talked about it on the show. So the follow-up email says this. Dear Aaron, Danae, Jonathan, thank you so much for reading our snake email and shouting out Twinkle Toes, uh, which is the dance company. Uh, the kids and I are so excited to hear my email pop up in the show, and we've listened to it many times. This past weekend was the first chance for our volunteer team to meet, so we wanted to use the opportunity to say thanks. And because it's Pixar it didn't happen at CinemaSins.com, she sent along a picture of their entire team 
uh, with holding up signs saying "Thank you, BTS." So Yay, there is proof. That's amazing. It did happen. Uh, this did happen. So I really loved this email because Aaron forwarded this email to Jonathan and I, and Jonathan's like, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing!" And I respond with something along the lines of. Am I the only one concerned that there's a massive group of children listening to our show? <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> Hi. Makes me Jill. rethink a lot of stuff in the outtakes. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe just that segment. I think maybe oh, okay, just that okay, section. Okay. Just that um, segment. Right, yes. right, 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 but right. Yes, could be, could be. Uh, Elizabeth follows by saying, I've now caught up on all the BTS episodes, and it's just the saddest thing to have to drive without getting to hang out with the BTS family. Thank you for all the laughs, philosophical discussions, stories of your kids, lists, recommendations, etc. Your work and hearts are so appreciated. Uh, so thank That's you, Elizabeth. so sweet. Thank Appreciate you so much. You. Appreciate you very much. All right, let's move into Beyond the Sins. To infinity and beyond. Somewhere beyond my wild history. To boldly go where no man has gone before. We're just going to chat about something else from the pop culture universe uh, that we have seen recently. Um, what do you got, Ian? Um, I'm going to apologise for any overlap between um, the BTS crowd and the Sif Pop crowd because I haven't <laughs> actually done much with myself over the last week. So I'm going to recommend what I recommended over there. And it's a video game called 12 Minutes. Um, and it was perfect for me because it's so short. So if you... Uh, Is it like about wanna, 12 minutes? Somewhere it, around it's that? It's something like 11 <laughs> minutes and 60 seconds. It okay. comes in at around right, that. Fair enough. Um <laughs> If, if you're, for me, getting into a new, like starting up a new game comes with an hour and a half of finding out the rules, some introduction story stuff before I actually get to play. So I deliberately wanted something that I could just get straight into for half an hour and then get back to writing. And this was perfect because I got to play it twice. Um, but no, so the, the premise is that this is a Groundhog Day style time loop game. Um, and it has actual. Um, it's actual people in it. Who's Willem Dafoe, uh, Daisy Ridley, and uh, Professor X. James McAvoy <laughs> um, voiced the characters in this. So there's some good voices that you recognise. And you are you play a person, it's a top-down adventure. You play a person that gets home um, to find their fiancé. Um, you quickly, after about 12 minutes or so, find yourself resetting the loop. Um, and the goal is to break free of the loop, and you're the only one aware that you're repeating the same day. Um, the more you get to explore the the apartment, the more clues reveal themselves. There's a fantastic mystery in it, um, and I don't want to say anything more because this is just a game that you need to experience and and get into. And it's available on the Microsoft Store on PC and Xbox. You know, it's it's interesting because in many ways the the loop movies um, or Groundhog Day movies, as you know, uh, they've been called. Uh, many of them all use video game aesthetics. You know what I mean? Like that's kind yeah. of the idea mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. you know you have multiple lives and you're trying to accomplish a task and that kind of thing. So to see it go full circle, you know, to now yeah, it's to have to have a loop video game being called a Groundhog Day type video game is so strange because in many ways they all are you know like the original yeah if you Super get it wrong Mario you have Brothers, to redo it yeah i mean like you know it's so it's 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 just a fascinating yeah. cultural thing how those movies have become so popular and so many of them exist mm -hmm. now that that idea now translates to a different type of video game that is really inspired by video games. <laughs> by, itself, <yeah. laughs> by itself, And this definitely is a time loop game because the character you're playing acknowledges that. They know that when something happens, they're back to square one. So it, it, it definitely isn't just trying to get through a mystery. They are frustrated that they can't get out of this loop. Yeah, um, so yeah it's, it's brilliant. Just, it's, it's, it's so good. It's a bit. What is the snake eating its tail called? Like the orb Boris or whatever oh, it is. Like, yes. it, it's just yeah, it yeah. feels a little bit like the snake eating its tail, but um, mm. sounds really cool. Indeed, that's brilliant. Really good. We've mentioned Bond quite a bot, uh, bit in the last few weeks, and I'm, I mentioned that I've been watching all of them. I actually finished up uh, this week with the Tim uh, Timothy Dalton, the two Dalton Bond movies. And we talked a little bit about License to Kill, but I want to mention The Living Daylights uh, for mm -hmm. my Beyond the Sins. Um, I was not ready for how much I enjoyed the Dalton movies. I like I really like him as Bond. I think there's he 
he has a good balance. Maybe a little less of the snark and humor that I think maybe Bond needs, mm. but he's definitely charismatic and interesting. And what struck me while watching The Living Daylights, other than the fact that I kind of enjoyed the movie, which has not been my experience with a lot of the older <laughs> uh, Bonds, yeah. Um, what kind of struck me with The Living Daylights is that it's kind of a prototype uh, Daniel Craig performance. Like you can almost see Daniel Craig doing that move. Like it's just, it's really interesting to me that this thing I thought was fresh with Daniel Craig has existed before. You know, Bond has been played this way more seriously, a little more authentic, a little more singular in his love interest, you know, uh, you know, a little uh, less uh, lascivious. Um, and so I really kind of liked The Living Daylights. Did I love it? No, I wouldn't say I loved it, but I really liked it. And for an old Bond movie, that was, you know, kind of a surprise. So uh, just a shout yeah. out to the, I guess the, the Beyond the Sins is kind of the Dalton, the two movie, you know, Dalton. Uh, era, but uh, more specifically, the Living Daylights, uh, I think, yeah. is is worth mentioning. So, License to Kill is frustrating, but it's still better than I, I like it better than all of like the Roger Moore ones. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The Living Daylights is, I, I agree, it's it's a good, it's a I good Bond you, film. It's a good movie. It's so weird now after this year having like actual Bond opinions. Like I, you know, I I knew how I felt about the you know, the yes, Pierce Brosnan yeah. and the Daniel Craig ones or whatever. But it's so weird now whenever there's a Bond conversation, I actually have things I think. <laughs> you have context. <laughs> I have context. You, you can base it on something. Yeah. Like when you were like, I like it better that. than, uh, you know, all the Roger Moore ones. I'm like, well, even even The Spy Who Loved Me, because that movie's pretty good. Like, you know, you like there's some things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, because um, The Spy Who Loved Me is like, that is, in my mind, like old Bond prototype. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. that's where Austin Powers comes from. You watch that movie, and you're like, this is the movie Austin Powers is yes, parodying is. Uh, the most. Um, so, it's just weird to have context now on something I haven't had context with before. So yeah. imagine that's what it would be like if I watched sports <laughs> and if I managed to talk to somebody about sports because yeah. I can't do yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine that'd be what it be. It'd be like if I spent the year investing in every single football game ever played in the <laughs> oh, history of God. football. No, 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 no. <laughs> I nearly had to do that once when I worked in a pub because just to talk to the regulars, you need to know some football. Uh. Ugh. And I Ugh. just do I hated my. Well, do you though? <laughs> when you do the day shift, and I think not not to be sexist, but if you're a man, it's almost expected. And I was shunned for the first few months because well, I. That's not you being sexist. That's culture being sexist. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I had nothing to talk about with these people. And when there were three people in the whole pub, I'm like, I'm gonna have to do something, or I'm gonna start drinking at 11 a.m. Yay, sports ball! <laughs> uh, yeah. Yay. Yeah, exactly. Today, what about you? I have nothing, but Jonathan says, nothing to do with this, but if you guys want to see a good sequel, go check out Venom. <laughs> I had forgotten nice, that we were doing nicely this. Done. Nice. Yeah, Let good. There Be Carnage. It is Amazeballs. And one of my favorite online critics, at Galactic Dave on Twitter, uh, said, oh, uh, wait, shit. At, at Galactic underscore Dave, right? Yeah, mm, uh, yeah um, correct. Really uh -huh. important, Matt. On Twitter, said, and I quote, this movie fucks. It is heavy metal to the MCU's soft rock. And he's so right. Did you say that? I didn't write that. Wow, wow. Maybe he's trolling you. Please tweet him <laughs> and let him know your thoughts. He also said that Iron Man 3 was the best Iron Man movie. Oh, he's he's so dick. crazy. Once again, it's at Galactic. Oh, you know what? He's saying at Galactic Dave. Uh, so I mean, we'll, do we don't it. know. Tweet that person. His <laughs> name is like Brian or something. See you all next week. <laughs> Very wow. nice. Wow. I mean, that's, yeah, it's a good thing I've got your chair now, Jonathan. <laughs> good luck, good luck crying it back from me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, okay. So that is Twelve Minutes is a video game that you can check out. The Living Daylights. Uh, I think you'd have to rent it. Um, I don't believe it's streaming anywhere for free. And Venom, Let There Be Carnage, uh, which you can do in a double feature with Ian's favorite movies and Iron Man Three. So there you go. <laughs> the Beyond the Sins for this week. That's gonna do it for Behind the Sins. Don't forget to make sure you're subscribed and go ahead and leave a comment or rating as well. If you've got anything you want to send us, feel free to mail it to us. P.O. Box 881 Republic, Missouri 65738. You can hang out with us on Twitter. I'm at Aaron Dicer. She is at Danae Says. D-N-E-E-S-A-Y-S. -E -E and he is at Galactic underscore Dave. So for Ian Whittington, Danae Hughes, a mouse with a limp biscuit, and myself. We will see you next week. 
Happy Jonathan's a jerk day. <laughs> wow, there's so much bite in that. <laughs> oh. oh, shit. Oh, shit. Thanks for listening. Send any feedback to bts at cinemasins.com. And be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment. Find more ways to connect by visiting cinemasins.com slash bts. No, I'm good. I got my um, first official shout out on the Sincast. It was an insult, but <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the club. That was <laughs> that was my first official shout out as well. Yeah, I'll take it. That's fine. I got blamed for being English or British. I mean, it's fair. Um, it's a fair call. It's not wrong. I don't know if blame is the right word, but mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't. I can't help where I fell out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that explains a lot that you fell out. Uh, that that uh, that helps clear a few things up. Well, if you talk to my mum, it was absolutely the opposite. It was three days of not falling out. Ah, yes, three days of clawing at her insides to stay oh. home. Yeah, yeah, where it was nice and warm. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. when I did decide to exit, it was kind of face first, which apparently is a bad thing. I just wanted oh. to say hello. Well, that's better than feet first, from my understanding. Yes. But uh, but yeah, you should probably lead with the crown of the head, which is, again, why they call it crowning. Indeed. Yes, not facing. <laughs> <laughs> I've been present for four, so I'm aware of That's the process. Good going. Did yeah. you have any dramatic movie arrivals? Like, I'm going to make it. No, I didn't make it. So, yeah. So our uh, our fourth was so fast that basically we got into the hospital and my wife was like, get the doctor in here now. He's coming. And they were like, okay, all right. It was one of those, one of those situations where you know your a significant other is actually more on top of it than the nursing staff is because oh, no, she's been done it because she's been through it three you know mm-hmm. three previous times knows her own body all that kind of stuff and they're used to how it usually is or whatever and um she's like no no seriously it's time get the doctor in here mm-hmm. and uh yeah so doctor comes in starts putting on his gloves doesn't get the second glove on <laughs> before delivering well. our baby so I guess I won't be needing this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's amazing. That's Hello. so good. Hi, Hello, Danae. Danae. We're just uh, two dudes talking about giving birth, as is usually the I case. I immediately checked out. I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you're intimidated by how knowledgeable we are and how much no, that face said no. <laughs> That face said stop talking immediately. <laughs> ah, you're learning. Listen, um, there's just something about like the birth story that people expect you to talk about the birth mm-hmm. story. Yeah. Nope. And it's fucking nope. traumatizing shit. Yeah. Okay, you want to talk about birth story, Ian? Here nope. we go. No, 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 <laughs> so no, 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 I no. No, I was talking about my birth story. Thank oh, you. Doesn't mean okay. I care about anyone else's. Oh, I see. Okay. <sighs> so what is Lord. your birth story? I fell out. Um, no, it was- <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. What a way to to uh, head into this podcast face first. You know, just <laughs> well, we've 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 breached. Now we're in. Yeah, we're yeah. Out. I'm Honestly, literally we- fucking leaving. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not. I will. You, you won't. No, too, she will. Too many puns. Do your wounds puns. hurt right now? Is your vagina hurting right now? Are you fucking having traumatic relivings of a you know, person coming back. out of your damn fucking crotch? Huh? Could you, Jesus. Could you, we ask for this. Oh, we ask for this. We deserve that. We deserve yeah, that. Totally fun. deserve that. How about the hips that haven't gone back into place? How about the four years of pain that I've been experiencing? Mm-hmm. How about the yep. $10,000 I've yep. put into medical bills to make sure that my ass is getting better? Huh? Yep. How about yeah. that shit? Yes, yes. How about my tits that are now pointing to my goddamn toes? How about my four and a half year old who still wants to breastfeed and does so with her teeth sometimes because mommy, it tastes good. You want to fucking talk about birth stories? Let's fucking go. But I'm going to be pissed about it. And you're the ones that are perpetuating this. So this is all fucking on you. Totally agree. 100%. And that that was gold. That'll be like the number one voted for clip uh, on next year's (laughs) The Welcome Show. (laughs) They're trying right now to fix the uh, edit. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, what's wrong with it? 
So I sent them a, uh, well, it's terrible. There's, there's nothing funny about it. So I completely re- rewrote the entire thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've lost, we've, we've lost Ian. We've lost I'm Ian. Done. I'm out. <laughs> it's just You're me now. You're show on your own. <laughs> no, it's, it's the exact opposite. It's one of the greatest videos we've ever done, in my opinion. Uh, and, um, and it's also so time sensitive. Yeah. And so when it uploaded, it got blocked. Uh, oh. blocked it. So it's okay. Like 30 days from now, you know, it will play, but 30 days from now is even going to like the amount our culture moves on. Um, but it'll still be fine. People will still like it. It'll still be funny. But- all that stuff. But, I've got friends that barely watch TV and they've already binged the entire thing. Right. It's it's like the biggest television phenomenon in since pre-pandemic. Yeah. You know, may, maybe since uh this, this is bigger than Tiger King, right? Like I was going to oh, say like way bigger. Way yeah, way bigger. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So so the the pressure to like get it up immediately. Yeah. Save your jokes. Uh is, is <laughs> It's all right. I'm just I'm having fun up here. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, the pressure to get it up immediately is one of those things that it's just like we've got to, and when you can't, when you can't get it up right away, and it's so important, and it's just it's, embarrassing it's because embarrassing, everyone else, right? Like, everyone else has managed to get so, it up immediately, and we right, just couldn't, right? And it just it, you you can't get it up, and so you go to your team, right? And you're like, how? How, how can help me help me get this up right like there's no we, good looking at it again no no what can you do what tricks can you do to help us get this up and get it where it needs mm-hmm. to be i know some <laughs> <laughs> what are you uh what are you right what are you doing right now today what are you writing i'm on? drawing something that i had a dream about oh yeah i had this dream about this you really talk about it? interesting necklace yeah so i went to go see a friend at where they worked at the mall and it's this person that i actually play mm, the uh wild rp game with and they play this like native character and i was going to meet the actual person that plays that character right so like the human behind the the character and so i walk in and his manager is wearing this necklace and and it's like this really cool native necklace And I was instantly jealous of it. I was like, well, I want one of those. And so Uh she comes up to me and she says um, something about like, hey, I'm so-and-so. I work with him. And and I was like, yeah, I know. I I work with him too. And yeah, I have one of those same necklaces. (laughs) (laughs) Real mature. Nice. Yeah. So when I woke up, I was like, well, that was petty. And then I instantly started drawing this necklace because it was so fucking cool. I have a new spaceship. You do already? Yeah. How nice. often do you get new spaceships? Well, I feel like you just got one. So do you pace yourself? Yeah. So the XLs that Eagle must do, there's not very many of them. And this one has just, its it was on pre-order and it's just arrived at my doorstep. And it's beautiful. Hold on and it only second. appears in one episode. It's no, do it again, so do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Yeah, I am a child. Will you hold it still so I can fucking see it? Come on now. (laughs) Wow. It's like ask asking a collector to hold their toys still is just it's it's painful. It's just like it's to play with. I want to see it in detail. I want to see it. Hey, but where where does the shield come from? So the deflector shield. It, don't you don't you laugh at me like I don't know this. The, the deflector That's shield not why is I'm there, laughing. and what that what that does is pushes all of the space junk out of the way when the ship is at warp. Mm. Um, and then the shields, um, which are used during battle, um, I think they come from the same place, but they do a different thing. Um, so yes, deflector and shields. Aaron, are Aaron, very different. thoughts. That's like a penis. Things come from the same place that do different things. No. <laughs> 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 oh man, the silence was funnier than the joke. <laughs> what the but, fuck? I don't. I don't Is it not? Know. Is it not? I, don't, I still don't I, know what you said. I think it's a great metaphor. <laughs> different things. I don't know what I said to inspire that. <laughs> you said you it said does different things, but it comes from the comes same from place. The same, thing, same place. Oh right. 
Well, it's like yes. the ship's penis. That's all I'm saying. The ship has well, a penis. It's like the ship's mouth. As w- uh, the mouth does <laughs> that as well. It can vomit no, and spit. No, 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 that's a little different. That's that's not quite as accurate. That's, oh, no, that's the stretch. That's what's the stretch. It's going to be a good show. I know we now have audio of you uh, singing really? the Star Trek theme. So that'll be, that'll oh, be wonderful. I do. I do. Yeah. Yes, you do now. Hey, hey, what, what, which one was I accidentally singing? Was it the when, same one? When I was, when do, was that? Do, 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 doing that one. Time. I think you were singing The Next Generation, yeah. which is what I was humming. Which isn't the show that that chip is from. Nope, that's Star Wars. Wait, no, no what? <laughs> no, that wasn't. That was the bridge for TNG. Yes, that's what you thought that's it was, yeah, but thought that's it was. not what Danae was doing. That's no. exactly what Danae was doing. Okay, we're finding this fucking music right now. <laughs> so that's not what she did. That's not what she did, though. That is not what she did. What she did. I will play it right now in the outtakes again. And you tell me if this is Star Wars or Star Trek. You tell me, dear listeners. <laughs> There's a high probability that I am wrong. <laughs> Quick comment before we get started. I expected the slurp to end up in the outtakes, but I didn't think it would get the anal treatment. That probably needs some context. Um, yeah, what are we talking about? Does it? Wait, what I happened? Think so. I for, especially for today. Uh Danae, so there was a week when Jonathan said anal and said that it would end up in the outtakes and I used it instead of the <laughs> between each outtake. Um it was <laughs> <laughs> It was just it was just him going anal. <laughs> anal. Oh, I haven't listened to that. That's amazing. <laughs> you monster. What? Uh, and so what? this past <gasps> week you slurped during one of my like intros to one of the segments or whatever, and then you were laughing, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. And so I said, That's I'm going to sip my coffee. Yeah. You were sipping your coffee that you had gotten. <laughs> and it was so loud. And it was so loud. And so I, I was like, was I'm going to replay it again. And so I replayed it again in the show. And then I used that for the <laughs> during the outtakes. I used your. Oh, <laughs> that's phenomenal. Hot so. shit, man. You're having fun with those outtakes. It's almost yeah. like maybe I should listen to the show sometime. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. You don't understand the mental gymnastics I've been through with Aaron and, and Ian here in just the first 30 minutes. Like, yeah, you, you love us so much, Danae. You love next us. Next mm-hmm. level. It is like two <laughs> children who haven't seen each other in a long time racing towards each other, what? just, just like We're... so happy. And it's just nonstop puns. It's nonstop. <laughs> it's been one, maybe 17 at best. Yeah. It's nonstop. Or worst, depending it's on non-stop. your yes. So, so it's kind of like being in the middle of these two, like just hyper active children that are mm-hmm. so excited and amped up. And I'm like, oh my god, my role has just shifted. You know how like there's <laughs> there's group dynamic, right? Right. And yeah. as someone yeah. who is often the chaotic person, I now have to be <laughs> the other one. So I'm just gonna sit back. And let you guys just take the show today. That's my plan. It is one of those weird things where, like, I feel like I found a brother in some ways. Like, we're just kind of getting to to know each other, but we are so similar. Tell the story about the package you got from Ian. Tell that story, Danae. Like, you got a yeah, package. Yeah, tell it, Danae. You got a package from Ian, and you texted me. Do you? Oh, with see, the thing. Yes. Do you understand the energy that I am talking about? <laughs> yes. No. You. You have said nothing incorrect. You have said nothing he's incorrect. Like, he's like, I've century. got a new brother. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, you just Aaron. Sound a bit different. Jeez, the Pete. You're All right, usually I'll tone so it down. calm. I'll, turn, and you're I'll dial so, it down a no, little bit. I what can I say? I love it. I okay, fucking right. love it. It's okay. just like, wow. I didn't need coffee today. At all. <laughs> so I get this package in the mail from Ian, and the first thing that I notice is that Ian and Aaron's handwriting is identical. So I text Aaron and I say, Hey, do me a favor, write the word Ian Whittington and take a picture of it and send it to me. And he's like, What? And 
just trust me just trust me <laughs> he does so i send back a picture of ian's handwriting which i now have because i got this package in the mail and side by side they are almost a hundred percent identical we should actually show at some point in time we should like post this somewhere because maybe on patreon or something because you guys have to see it it's it's eerie and then uh aaron and i get together for lunch uh and i bring the package over so he can see the rest of the handwriting instead of just the name ian whittington he could actually see the rest of it and how you stared at it for a good two seconds like <laughs> just, did i write this yes that's what it was like <laughs> There is no logical reason why our handwriting should be the same at all. But you have very similar personalities, too. You share the same birthday. You have very right. similar approaches to how you write sins. I've been around Aaron for almost a decade. We're best fucking friends. And the similarities between Ian and Aaron are sometimes eerie. <laughs> and so to get the handwriting being exactly, I'm like, what the absolute fuck you. is happening right now? Yeah. So I get it. You, you guys are like, you are some sort of cosmic soup together and i am part, entangled i'm just going to be watching the show today like i'm really excited for it to see you guys together it's gonna it, be fun it's like a uh it's it's like a soul doppelganger you know like you you, you hear yeah. of like uh you know people who find somebody Visual that looks just like them um but this is more like a like a spirit thing um because i don't have red hair so you know that already <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was gonna be such a good show god i'm back to i'm back to being in the game now right. now you're back i've just yeah. had all the energy sucked I'm, from me i'm now gonna chop right. off my fingers so that i never write like this man again <laughs> nice